Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Own the Moment podcast. My name is TJ Lasig. I'm your host here at OTM, and we are one day away from tipping off the 2023-2024 NBA season. Exciting stuff ahead. We've got Wemby Madness on tap for this season. Tons of storylines in terms of big trades and player movement in the offseason. And of course, this means Series 5 of NBA Top Shot is coming your way. And with this in mind, two weeks ago, three of the, the true kind of Top Shot OGs, Drew Austin, Michael Levy, and Jason Metz, got together and had what they deemed the great NBA Top Shot debate. And I must say, I listened to the conversation, and, and it was indeed a great debate. Three people that are very passionate about Top Shot as a product, three people that have been around since the very beginning, and also three people that that have differing viewpoints on Top Shot as a whole and whether or not Top Shot has been successful and in what ways it's been successful and in what ways maybe it's fallen short. So I posted a thread summarizing this conversation last week. You can check that out on my X account. Make sure you give me a follow at TJL5124DFS. But I'm also going to break down the conversation in this podcast here today, summarize the key things that they talk through, summarize my key takeaways, and get ready for the NBA season. All right, real quick before we dive into the conversation with NBA season starting tomorrow, this does mean that we are bringing back OTM Hoops. This is our fantasy basketball game where you can use your NBA Top Shot moments to build fantasy basketball lineups and compete against other collectors and we've made a couple of game format changes heading into the season felt that last year's hoops was maybe a a little too simplistic so we are pumped to be rolling out two new games we have hoops boost and hoops icon hoops boost is a game where the play of the moment will come into impact here so for people that are familiar with the game moment ranks play very similar format to that. Uh, you can check that out on our website. And then we're also going to have a second format called Hoops Icon, where we are taking the top 15 kind of superstar players in the league and moving them into their own icon slot so that you can only play two of them on a given slate, force people to, to search for a little more value. We still have the, the hero multiplier in effect for using a rare or legendary, gets you 1.25x on your points in both formats. But yeah, there we have it. We have Hoops Boost and Hoops Icon. The first slate contests are live in the lobby right now. Right now, it's just free with no prizes as we are testing everything out to make sure we are up and running. But then we will be adding contests where you can buy in and compete for gold. And we are hopeful to have free to enter contests with dapper balance as prizes at some point this season. So make sure you check that out. OTMNFT.com slash hoops. Back to the topic at hand the great NBA Top Shot debate. Let's dive on in. And there were four main topics that, the again, Drew, Mike, and Jay covered during this conversation. Number one, they all shared their NBA Top Shot origin stories, how they got involved with the product at the very beginning. Number two, they went in depth on, is NBA Top Shot successful? How is it successful? How is it maybe not successful? Number three, the age-old discussion of collectability versus gamification. And then number four, just throw out some features that they want to see heading into the next series of Top Shot. Overall, again, very thoughtful, back and forth. Enjoyed the conversation. Highly recommend you give it a listen if you have not already. Topic number one, NBA Top Shot origin stories. So they started off the conversation where they each shared their intro to Top Shot how they got involved, when they got involved. And, you know, I think that that is obviously important context in terms of how each of them is coming to the table at this conversation based on when they joined, how they joined, etc. Mike, aka MBL. So Mike is, is one of the top, top shot holder collectors. He's also the founder of Floaty, which is a marketplace for NFTs on the Flow blockchain. But Mike joined all the way back in September of 2020 of 2020 and he was one of the first 200 collectors on the platform so a true OG there in Mike Levy Drew Austin 
Uh, so for those of you that don't know Drew, he's the also the founder of the Knights of DGen. Drew also comes from an investor background. So you can see that background and perspective coming into a, a lot of how he thinks about this. But Drew joined one month after Mike in October of 2020, and he kind of came in more as an NFT early adopter that then found Top Shot. So coming from, more from the crypto NFT space. And then Jay joined in February of 2021, and Jay came in as a, a big basketball guy, passionate basketball fan, and was getting into Top Shot as a way to kind of further his engagement with his favorite sport. A couple of things that, that I found quite interesting on the, the very, very early days of Top Shot in the conversation between Mike and Drew. So we're talking about like pre-February 2021 boom, what was Top Shot like? Right. And, and Mike gave a lot of good insights into this. And the things that stood out to me was number one, again, only 200 collectors on the platform. So very, very small amount of people that are collecting this product in the early stages of series one. And of those 200 people, most of them were crypto early adopters. They were not actually basketball fans. And then number three, and this continued to be a thing for, for even a couple of months after February, but you could not withdraw money at all from the platform. Okay, so you're in a situation where you have 200 collectors, they're crypto early adopters, not basketball fans, and they can't take money off of the platform. The money is just there. So I think all of these things played a, a big factor into the, the kind of short-term boom that we saw in February 2021. And uh, we'll get into more of that later. But as most of you probably know, then in February 2021, this is where we saw this massive boom influx of users to Top Shot, people buying packs, the ability to flip packs for a massive profit, articles in the Wall Street Journal, getting all this mainstream media press, et cetera, et cetera. Top Shot was on top of the world for a very short amount of time. And then I think as we all know, it came kind of crashing down shortly after that. Drew highlights how as a business owner, right? During this time of February, 2021, you see all this growth, you get excited about the growth and you start building for scale and your investors tell you to start building for scale and your partners tell you to start building for scale, right? Building under the assumption that, hey, we're gonna have millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of NBA fans that want to come onto this platform. Let's build for that world. Unfortunately, that scale never came. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about this, but as a result of that scale not coming and as a result of some of the decisions that were made potentially in preparation for that scale, we saw a difficult situation play out in terms of the economy of Top Shot that has kind of brought us to where we are today. But there's a, a quick kind of highlight recap of where each of these three guys started their Top Shot journey. And then we move on to topic number two, which is just straight up, Drew asking the question, is NBA Top Shot successful? Yes or no? Now, the consensus answer between all three of them was that at the highest level, when you zoom out, like, yes, NBA Top Shot is definitely a success. It's been the top driver of users to Web3 to this day, had a major impact on the NFT industry as a whole. NFTs probably don't become nearly what they are or were without Top Shot introducing the masses in that short period of time. Just, you know, simply the massive sale and traction numbers that they had. And it's really the first true use case of NFTs and major IP, major intellectual property, in this case, of course, being the NBA. So highest of levels, Top Shot, absolutely a success. When you compare expectations from day one to where they ended up, success, no doubt. The problem is when you zoom in a little bit more at a micro level, there's a lot of issues here. And a lot of things that have not been successful. The guys had a great discussion about this, great back and forth about this. And, you know, I'd say three, three main things were discussed. Number one, the mishandling of supply and demand. This is, of course, 
the root of all issues. There is a ton of supply out there of NBA Top Shot moments and, frankly, not enough users to match the need and desire for that supply. Number two is gamification, kind of meddling in the market and the potential unintended consequences that have happened as a result of gamification. And then number three, the the kind of hiring mishaps and communication breakdowns that have happened over time. Jay gave, you know, great points and discussions on this, that Dapper and the Top Shot team has lost trust of a lot of collectors and has failed to execute on a lot of the things that they said they were going to deliver for the community. All of this has kind of trickled down to this unhappy core user base that is, is frankly, mostly unhappy because they're down money, right? People came in, they bought moments at higher prices, and those prices have never returned. To summarize, you can kind of see how this happened, right? You start with this small community of 200 collectors. All of a sudden, you boom to tens of thousands of users essentially overnight. At that time, there's minimal supply available and users can't withdraw money from the platform. So that just increases the prices to become sky high because there's just not that supply out there. These new users come in. They make purchases at these high prices. Then down the line, a new wave of supply comes in. The new wave of supply dramatically decreases the value of the existing supply. New users do not come in after that. And as a result, these same users that bought moments at these high prices are kind of left holding the bag today. And, you know, all during this time, Top Shot is building for scale. Dapper is going out, seeking additional IP to apply the same concept, right? There's lots of things happening at once. And it really just kind of created this perfect storm of big boom to rapid drop off to never quite fully recovering from that initial February 2021 madness mayhem. But overall, again, highest of high levels, smashing success, smashing success. And, you know, Top Shot will forever be in the history books of Web3. There's no doubt about that. Has had massive success, has brought on many, many users into Web3. And like whether or not the community that exists today is unhappy, they're certainly still passionate. This brought us to topic number three, which is the age old topic of gamification versus collectability. This is a topic that has been discussed many, many times in the past, but I thought there were a couple unique takes here on on the gamification stuff. Jason talked about the impact that gamification has on the economy and, and kind of his concerns with the manufacturer of the product also being the market maker of the product and by introducing things like challenges the manufacturer essentially having the ability to determine what moments do have value in a certain time right based on this gamification and he also talked about this idea that like because this gamification exists you essentially have to play the games if you want to get value out of your moments Right. If you are someone who just wants to collect the moments and then sit on the sidelines every time that there's some kind of game or challenge that boosts a moment in your collection, if you are not taking advantage of that boom and selling your moment into the rise in price, you are theoretically losing quote unquote value on the collection that you hold. And I think there is a lot of validity to that point and i think it is something that has created a bit of a a bit of a problem right and you know related to this number 2 is that it, it's hard to be both a pure collectible and a game piece i think we are finding that out and we have not yet found that kind of proper middle ground 
between collectible and game piece. The guys did talk about how burning is an effective game mechanic, and I agree with that. I think burning is awesome. I think people like burning. I think burning is good for engagement. It's good for the economy. It's good for supply management, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I think burning is, is definitely a big win. But to me, going back to this kind of gamification versus collectability, like I still think that we don't have a clear definition of the product. And that's a problem. Like, I still feel like if you ask the question, what is NBA Top Shot and why would I own NBA Top Shot moments? We don't have that concise one sentence, two sentence answer. And that's what we need, right? Is it a collectible? Is it a game piece? Is it something that is intended to give you access to the NBA? Like, what is it? What is the purpose of it? And as a collector, why would I get involved? And it's a bit frustrating that we don't have that concise answer. And I've said this before about NFL all day as well. But we need that product definition. And it can't be this pie in the sky. Again, in my opinion, it can't be this pie in the sky future of fandom, like changing the world. Like we're past that. It's been three years. Top Shot has not changed the world. And we need a more tangible definition of what the product is or else we're going to continue to be in this cycle where we are spinning our wheels and people are not really sure what's going on, why we are doing this, why we own this stuff. And I just think the product has not found product market fit. Topic number four, the final thing that was discussed is feature requests heading into the next series. <clears throat> and the main thing that the guys talked about that I completely agree with is the ability to show off your collection, right? This kind of goes back to the definition of the product. But if we are defining NBA Top Shot as, hey, this is the premier collectible of the NBA, the premier digital collectible of all things NBA, of NBA history. Well, great. That's awesome. As a collector now, I need a way to show off the stuff that I own. Mike from Floaty MBL talked about how he is undeniably and arguably has the best collection on Top Shot. But he doesn't really have a way to show people that right? Give us that way to show our buddies, show our friends, our family, like, hey, here's my Top Shot collection. Here's the three things that I love about it. Like I get to format it in a way that I want something that I can just pull out my phone, show somebody like if this is a collectible platform, which it seems like that's the direction that it's heading. Then it needs to be table stakes that there's a kick ass way to show off my collection. And we're making steps towards this. I know the mobile app has been something that has gotten a lot of time from Dapper and is a, a big push going into next season. So I think that the mobile app absolutely helps with this. And, you know, hopefully we continue to see these improvements to how we can display our collection because these are NBA collectibles and the value of a collectible is essentially bragging rights to be able to show people like, hey, I am awesome because I own this stuff. They also talked about, like as a part of this, M Mike mentioned a good thing of like, hey, can we reward people for sharing their collections as opposed to only providing these kind of like edge seeking rewards? So I thought that that was a, a cool idea as well. Drew talked about in arena pack drops. That's something that, that I think has been brought up for for years now. And I am like, Phew, that, that'd be fantastic if we get to that point of these in arena pack drops, but yeah, good discussions in terms of, of what they're looking for. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. So excited to see what, what the team has in store for series five, but let's get a way to show off these sweet collectibles that we own. And there we have it. That's my quick, summary of the conversation to kind of double click back into it high level nba top shot huge success but after the february 2021 boom they started building for this scale that never came 
this left a user base that was mismatched in terms of supply and demand. Tons of supply, not enough users, not enough demand to match that supply. Gamification has been a core piece of the platform at times, but has also had its ups and downs, has had its positives and negatives. People want cool ways to show off their collection. And finally, my main summary and takeaway is that Top Shot is still awesome. It's still fun. And my goodness, there is a lot of passion when it comes to this product, when it comes to this platform. People love NBA Top Shot. People want to see it succeed. I love NBA Top Shot. I want to see it succeed. So cheers to a Series 5 of success for NBA Top Shot. And we'll see where we go from here. We'll see what they have in store for us this NBA season. But there we have it. Many, many thanks to Drew, Mike, Jay for having such a this sincere, thoughtful conversation. One that was much needed within the community. Hopefully you all enjoyed this quick summary. If you have not checked out the full conversation, definitely recommend checking it out since I was not able to touch, of course, on all of their thoughts. And if you aren't already, make sure you give me a follow over on X at TJL5124DFS. Check out my thread about this very topic if you enjoy it. Hit it with a like. Hit it with a three post. And I'll be coming to you all with more content in the future. In the meantime, happy NBA season. Head on over to otmnt.com slash hoops to enter your lineups. And I'll see you all next time.